What up, EJK here, and this video is going to be between Flash versus Parting on Merry-Go-Round. From the Home Story X, Home Story X Cup, from their very, very legendary series. Let's just hop into the, oh, it is a replay, not a VOD. Awesome. That's one of the main reasons why I'm doing this, because it's so much freedom, and I'm lagging a lot. What the fuck? Okay, that changing that to video capture for some reason helped a lot. All right, so <clears throat> we have Flash, we have Parting, and this is the game that Flash does an SCV pool, and that Parting does the crazy Colossi drop. The first thing I want to take note of here is Flash's building placement. He has his first supply depot made next to the minerals. Now this is a uh, multiplayer map as in other words there are more than two starting positions so you don't really have to be worried about a any in-base proxies I think that counts for all three four five six seven player maps anything that's not a two-player map so normally when you build a depot here that depot is used to scout f in case any early probes get into your base into any of the blind spots. But Flash doesn't need to do that because this is a multiplayer map. He's going for a very standard Reaper expand. Both players are scouting. Of course they have to. Uh, Flash needs to scout where Parting is so he knows which way to send the Reaper. And Parting needs to scout Flash because he's going for Nexus first. He's kind of doing a little bit of mind games to Flash. But we see Flash isn't going to be phased by that. And that nice find on that uh, probe over there. Now this game opens up pretty normally, and I guess the theme for this video is going to be what, or like just IDing what the game plan is and sticking to it, and seeing all of the crazy little things that Flash does to enhance his play, so that all aspects of his whatever he's doing in the game is going to be going towards his uh, how to like how he's going to win the game and by that i mean he is going to be he's going to win the game with an scv pool off of three command centers but only on two bases that's his end game plan and everything else he does is going to circle towards enhancing that and giving him a higher percentage of winning such as having those two depots closer by the mineral patches more economy more units faster push time blah 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 these are very very small things but having being able to squeeze out one marine as a result of that like five seconds faster makes can make the biggest difference in the world at this level of play I also have not figured out a reason why Flash does this as well, uh, taking his gas, he always takes his natural gas before his main gas. I think, well, yeah, I'm not even sure why he does that, because I'm, I thought, I've always thought that it's better to have 16 SCV saturation over here, and then go up to like 18, and to build a gas here because it's more economical, your SCVs don't have to travel so far. But, I don't know, he he does that in every single matchup as well, and even on like on a map such as Deadwing, where the gas is sticking out in, at the natural, he takes that gas e anyways, and I feel like that might be, that could be a potential bad thing against a all-in or like two-base play, because the refinery could be, be very easily sniped. Anyways. The reason why I paused it here is because we're going to do a quick check of what's going on. We see, besides the weird gas thing, Flash doesn't know what Parting is doing. Parting doesn't know what Flash is doing. However, Flash has his Reaper over here, so he doesn't need any bunkers up because he hasn't seen any units coming by. He, The only thing he needs, really, is a turret. But he's not, he's not really worried about DTs either at the moment. 
could be the mind games, that, the epic, epic mind games that went into this series. Anyways, Flash's play is a bit different because, again, like I said earlier, his endgame plan is to go for an SCV pool. So we see here, this tech lab has already been added on fairly quickly. At the 17-15 minute mark, he already has a second tech lab before his factory is done. That is a very, very fast second tech lab. And he's going to use it to start his Marauder production. And he wants to get an increased Marauder production as fast as possible. Because when he adds his 4th and 5th barracks, they are going to remain bare. This is a very interesting SCV all-in. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to make a video of this game. Because even though it's different from the traditional 5 racks, 3 tech labs, 2 reactors that we normally see, I think it serves the end game plan, which is the SCV pool, a lot better for Flash than uh, what we've been seeing other players do in the past. We also see here, all of these supply depots give Flash a nice little ring around his base. I think that's just for map vision, like just to be able to see the corners. Parting doesn't do that at all. He is the exact opposite. But this might be a bit more helpful for warp prisms. It also could be a bit more helpful because on the minimap, it lights up that vision over there a little bit more. Just some perks of doing it. And we see the third command center going down at a relatively normal time. Flash, however, opts to build his third command center in his base rather than at his third. This could also be because he is afraid of a two base all in which parting is doing, but it's mo it's probably going to be for, like, I don't know 100%, but it's going to be because he's, doesn't, he's not going to mine from his third command center, so there's no real reason to put it on the ground in the f uh, first place. And even though parting sees it, well, he doesn't see it yet, but even though he is going to see it, it's going to allow him e for epic mind games. Like, he's going to see it, and he... The first thing that's going to come into his head is that Flash is playing a macro game and that he's also playing conservatively because he would, if he was building on the low ground, it would be a lot more greedier. This awesome marine scouting that warp prism. The reason why Flash doesn't put a marine over here is because the, uh, the way that the main and the natural line up, this is the most, uh, I guess, straight... The, number one spot that things such as warp prisms would fly around so having a marine there instead of having a marine here as well makes it or it just gives a lot higher probability that you see these kinds of things happening because otherwise the warp prism has to fly all the way around and that's a much longer journey we're talking about days here people Anyways, uh, I'm going to be focusing more on Flash's build. Parting's, he's Protoss, so I don't really care. JK, JK. But really, Parting is playing pretty safe. He's going to be trying to play a macro game. Uh, he still hasn't seen that command center. Flash adding on his extra two barracks, and he's going to be adding on a second starport with a reactor as well. Another thing that we also don't see is how fast Flash ends up pulling his SCVs. And I think that's a reactionary decision based on the fact that this Warp Prism and Colossus got dropped for vir or got killed for virtually two SCVs. And that because he was also able to kill the robotics facility as well. So having this timing window before like even though Parting's Twilight Council is finished, attacking as soon as possible before either Templar Tech can be up or a robotics bay can be rebuilt means that you have the best possible timing window where the Protoss player has no ability to produce splash damage whatsoever. And like the Warp Prism, 50 seconds, Colossus, 75 seconds. So that's 125. That's almost two Colossus worth of production time that uh, Parting is also not going to have as well. It's also important to note that F41 SCVs, Flash has stopped making SCVs. Even though he only has 12 SCVs over here and his income is kind of shitty, 
he refuses to build any more than that because there's one, two, three, four that will equal 16 once they're done building their buildings. He doesn't want to invest any more into SEVs than he has to, and he wants 100% of his extra income to go towards building units. So building Marines, building the Marauders, building the Vikings, and he's building two Marines over here because he doesn't want to not build anything, but he also can't afford to build two Marauders right now because his second starport has just finished and he also has two reactors as well at the 11 minute mark and only on two bases. So his income is pretty tight. That's why he also ha didn't build any tech labs or reactors. Another benefit to not building a tech lab or reactor is that you can produce units immediately out of your barracks, giving you, your, you a higher army count than your opponent. These are all very small things that I wanted to point out that help shape Flash's play to make him so, so great at this game. Now we see his Marine is, is just going to go around because if he doesn't scout the third base, then there's not really any reason to push out or to do an SCV pool. I really like this decision by Flash because although he is going for an SCV pool, it's very obvious at this point, the cutting SCVs, not landing the third base, not having the extra add-ons, only having one engineering bay, all of these things mean he's going to be doing an SCV pool. It's really interesting to note that he moves out at this time. Oh, and he also only makes two medevacs as well, which is pretty crazy. So this attack is designed to hit at like the 13 minute mark-ish, whenever plus one finishes. Actually, before the 13 minute mark, so around the 12 minute 50 mark. That's how, it's a very, very fast all-in. It's similar to the build that he, we saw him do against, uh, who was it, Snoot, I believe, at Home Store Cup. That very fast two-base all-in. Just squeezing out as much as possible to get a, as big of an army as possible at the fastest time. Anyways, what I was what I originally wanted to say was Flash, although he's doing an SCV pull, he's moving his army out beforehand, and he's only after he sees the third base, he had the marine going over here and then he has his army going here. Only after he sees the third base is he going to actually pull his SCVs. Because against a two base Protoss, you actually don't want to pull your SCVs. It's very risky because the Protoss player is already turtled up. He hasn't invested an additional 400 minerals into that Nexus, so his army is going to be as strong as possible, and he's already going to be in a defensive posture as well. One of the reasons why Parting was able to hold on so long. So, yeah, Flash moving his army out over here. The Observer, of course, sees this, so Parting is already on the defensive. He's already panicking. You can see his army dancing around a lot. And then now Flash pulls his SCVs at the last possible second as well. And even though he didn't need to pull his SCVs to kind of win the first engagement, I think seeing how well he took this fight, he underestimated Parting's control ability. We see him just kind of A-moving his army in. Also, he's already stimmed twice on his army and he only has two medevacs with literally no energy so this army is going to get exponentially weaker we see flash only being able to reinforce with one medevac right now so like one of the big reasons besides overextending like attacking this gateway is great and all but when you have a bunch of stalkers over here photon overcharge and when you're attacking this gateway as well uh that can be the different that in fact, was the difference between parting getting destroyed and parting being able to live on for five more minutes into this game. Yeah, man, this not targeting this gateway really set him back. Uh, but yeah, so that's about five, uh, six, that's about 900 hit points. That's another 200, uh, 450, 650. So that's about 1,500 hit points. That's the equivalent of a bunch of stalkers. That's 160 health per stalker. So that's 1,600 hit points right there on 10 stalkers. He could have killed 10 stalkers. He could have killed the Nexus. 
but he instead chose to focus down those gateways. Ob a very obvious misplay by Flash. And we see him... Uh, he's a very good macro player, but his control isn't where it needs to be quite yet. And that's why this hold was a lot closer than it should have been. Because he was again like able to crush through that army really fast with the first stim but with the second stim and not completely targeting the army I'm sure he would have won if he had a couple more medevacs to heal but he didn't have any medevacs this was a very very fast attack and he only specifically made two medevacs on purpose to hit as fast as possible with as many vikings as possible as well so very high level all-in here from Flash that use it that like up to the point up to the fact that he doesn't make reactors and tech labs on his barracks he cuts SCVs at a very specific amount so that is perfect saturation on both bases not a single SCV more and that he only attacks with or he only makes two medevacs as well instead of the usual four that we see and all of those things allow him to hit as fast as possible. Actually, now that I think about it, this orbital isn't actually a bad thing to make because not only does it trick your opponent out, but what it also does is it allows you three mules and that's what is keeping Flash's economy up so that he can produce constantly out of all of these buildings. So yeah, that's just a very well thought out build. The only problem is that Flash uh, had some problems actually executing it and Parting's control was a lot better than Flash's throughout the series. Yeah. I don't think there's any need to really go over the rest of the replay because I think we've all seen the games. There's not really any hype. I'm not here to build hype excitement. I'm just here to break down the game in a level you guys can understand and so that you can see StarCraft for the beautiful game that it is. Um, yeah, so that pretty much brings an end to this video, nice little short video, and I really love casting from replays because I can just zoom in on all of the things that I want to, and I don't have to wait for the observer to get to it. So, yeah, that about brings it to an end for this video. EJK, out.